Heroic Heddin. The Takla Makan Desert in China is a desperate place to be. Locals call it the Sea of Death. So you get the picture. But ace explorer Sven Heddin wasn't put off by the name. Crossing the murderous Takla Makan was Sven's burning ambition. Here he is. Swedish, this one. Sven's dad was a top architect and he probably wanted young Sven to follow in his footsteps. But Sven didn't do brilliantly at school. He was too busy doing other things like drawing maps on the dining room table. When he left school, lucky Sven got a job as a teacher in Russia. Okay, so this might not be your idea of luck, but Sven had never left Sweden before and he was desperate to see the world. After this, Sven's feet never touched the ground. He was always on the road. Then, in 1894, he set off on his most daring trip so far, across the treacherous Taklamakan Desert. The March of Death. When Heddin got back, he was invited to give lots of lectures about his desert travels and thousands of people came to hear him talk. His lectures were so gripping, his audience really felt they were there. Do you fancy coming along with me? So, here's his picture. All sold out. It says Globetrotter Theatres are proud to present Ace Explorer Sven Hedin. Join Sven on his murderous March of Death, his latest sizzling desert lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I set out on April 10th from the town of Merkit on the edge of the Tatlamakan Desert. I was eager to be off. I had take, it had taken weeks to round up eight strong camels and to find four men who knew the desert well enough to act as guides. The locals begged us not to go. They were afraid we wouldn't come back from the Sea of Death alive. My plan was to head for the Khotan River in the middle of the Taklamakan. I reckoned it would take a month. At first, we made steady progress. All around us, the landscape became more desolate each day as each day passed. There was no sign of life to be seen and no sound bar the tinkling of the camel bells. We were getting deeper and deeper into this desert. Soon, there would be no turning back. Ten days out, we came to a rare waterhole, surrounded by lush green grass. I ordered the water bottles to be filled, confident the river was only four days away. Then, we headed east into the desert. Now, there was only sand as far as the eye could see, piled high in towering dunes, Suddenly, a savage sandstorm blew up. Howling winds hurled the sands into the air. Stinging sand got into our mouths, noses, ears, and clothes. Everywhere. See all the audience being gripped. By now, we should have reached the river. But I wasn't too alarmed. By my reckoning, we had enough water to last at least another week. Or so I thought. When I looked closer, I discovered the terrible truth. The bottles hadn't been filled properly at the last stop. Even with strict rationing, there was only enough water left for two more days. We tried to dig a well, but it turned out to be dry. If we didn't reach the river soon, we would surely die. The men were petrified, needless to say. They muttered about how the desert witches had put a spell on us. I couldn't help but agree. Two days and another sandstorm later, and the last of our water was gone. We were so thirsty, we killed the chickens and the sheep and drank their blood. But it didn't keep us going for long. We even drank the brandy we'd brought to fuel the stove but it made us sick. 
One by one, most of the men and camels lay down and died, until only a guide, Kasim, and I were able to continue. But now we were woefully weak. We were woefully weak, and we knew we couldn't survive for long. We staggered on for another day, half walking, half crawling across the sand. Just when Kazim could go no further, a miracle happened. Over the next sand dune, I spotted a green line of trees. I couldn't believe my eyes. We'd reached the Khotan River at last, and against all the odds, we'd been saved. I knelt on the river and drank until I felt my strength return. Then I filled my boots with water and went back to poor Kasim. Together, Kasim and I set out to find help. And as luck would have it, the very next day, we ran into a group of shepherds who gave us food and shelter. Four days later, one of the men we'd given up for dead turned up safe and well, leading the only camel left alive. They'd been found by travelers and re miraculously revived. Between us, we'd managed to cross the world's deadliest desert and complete our march of death, but we'd paid a very high prize. Now, have you been paying attention, or have you nodded off? I'll tap you gently on the shoulder and ask you a thirst-quenching question. What do you reply? A. The audience booed and hissed. B. The audience gave Hadin a standing ovation. Or C. The audience rushed out to get a drink. The answer is C. It's true. Sven painted such a horribly lifelike picture of the desperate desert that it left his audience gasping for a drink. After the lecture was over, they rushed out of the room and headed straight for the nearest tap. He is an earth-shattering fact for you. Desperate deserts are full of surprises. As Hungarian-born explorer Mark Aurel Stein found out. On a trek through the Gobi Desert in 1907, he stumbled on a crumbling cave. It didn't look much from the outside, but it turned out to be crammed full of priceless ancient manuscripts, carvings, and paintings perfectly preserved in the dry desert air. They'd been hidden there by Buddhist monks over 900 years ago. Can't stand the desert heat? Getting bogged down in all that sand? Don't worry. There are plenty of other perilous places on Earth just waiting to be explored. If you've got a head for heights, why not check out the monstrous mountains in the next hair-rising section? It'll have you clinging on for dear life.